The following program is sponsored in part by friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. Welcome to Kingdom Connection. Thank you for joining us. I really believe you're going to be blessed today. I don't think it's by chance that you've tuned in because I believe God is going to speak to you. The question is, are we listening? And I hope that you will just let the Holy Spirit open your ears, open your heart, lean in to today's message. It was preached right here at our church, Free Chapel. Let's go into the service today and let's believe that God's gonna to speak to you. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me and follow me in the book of Judges chapter five. When I see all that is going on in the world today, the signs of the times, I am aware that the coming of the Lord is getting nearer and nearer. And when you see, as Ezekiel chapter 38 clearly prophesies, the king of the north, which is, and it even names the ancient name of Russia, Rosh, R-O-S-H, I'll put a hook in the jaw of the king of the north, God said, and I'll begin to pull them down from the north all the way ultimately to the battle that will take place off of the Golan Heights and down into the valley of Megiddo. And when you see the king of the east, as Revelation said, there would be an alliance between the king of the north, Russia, the nation, the ancient land of Russia, and China. And then it predicts that Iran and Syria will come in great agreement, which that's already happened. Russia, you do know there are Russian troops in Syria, I guess. You know that they've made an allegiance and they're training and they have air force. And I had a friend tell me just recently that he woke up and he said, I, you can see from the shores of Israel in the Mediterranean Sea, you can see up to, at times, 30 naval Russian ships, from, which is it's so astounding when you read Ezekiel chapter 38. Out of all of the nations, the ones that are on the center stage of the earth, look at it, Russia, China, it's, it's spiritual wickedness. It's not a, a race of people that are evil. They're precious people. But you have these people who are being controlled by dictators who are, a, who are already under the influence of an antichrist spirit. It's so evident. It's so evident. We've watched in the last two years through the pandemic, freedoms and rights and things that, and this is not a political statement. I'm, I'm not against the, the vaccine. I have people in my family who've taken the vaccine, and I've had it twice, so I've got antibodies. I, I, I don't, I, if I need it, I'll take it. I don't care. The point is, I never thought I would see a day when you would have in American cities to have to have a card to be fed a meal. I've been in those cities. I was in, I was in a city not too long ago, and I went in to eat in the rest. I couldn't find anything to eat. I had to do room service because no restaurant would allow me to be fed without a card, without a vaccine. And all that is is a picture of the cashless society and the 666 and how that if you don't, if you don't take the mark, and I'm not talking about the vaccine. I'm talking about the system. Do you not understand? The system. Something's off. Something's going on. These are not normal times, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I've been doing this a long time, and I, I don't, I don't want to exaggerate. I don't want to. I've heard all my life, Jesus is coming, but never before have we been poised in position just like the Bible predicted it feels like. It feels like these times are different. I'm not worried about the Antichrist. I'm not worried about 666 because the book of Revelation is not a horror story. The book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ and it's a story of victory. It's a story of the church triumphant. 
It's the story of power in Jesus' name and through the blood of the Lamb over all the power of the enemy. And there's coming a day when the Russian bear is going to meet the line of the tribe of Judah. And he will prevail according to this book, and I believe this book. And by the way, I'm not going... I'm not going to be down here worrying about 666 because the next great event is the coming of the Lord. The trumpet is going to sound. Jesus is going to rapture his church. He has not appointed us under wrath. He's coming again. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, two will be working in the office. One will be taken. One will be left behind. Jesus taught that lesson. Two will be lying in the bed. One will be taken. One will be left behind. Everything that you've heard all of your life, but it has never been like it is now. This is different. And in the middle of all of that, what ought to be the response of God's people? With all of this going on, see, y'all got me so stirred up, I lost my whole place in the Bible, but I will find it. And listen, this is a time when God is on the move. Tell somebody, God's on the move. God's going to war, not with flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers because the Bible said in the book of Thessalonians that that, that the Antichrist, although he may be alive, he cannot show up until that which restrains him has, has been taken out. The restrainer is the Holy Spirit. It clearly says that. And the Holy Spirit is in the church. And when the church goes out, the Holy Spirit is going out. And then immediately the Antichrist will reveal himself. But before that, there's going to be a great revival in America and across the world. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit, Joel chapter 2, on all flesh and your sons and your daughters are not going to be a bunch of drug addicts and are not going to be a bunch of atheists and are not going to be influenced more by professors than they are the Word of God, godless professors, I should say. But I want to tell you that God has something very special for this generation. You've been through a lot. You've lost a lot in the last two years. But God has something very special believe that and this is what happens in Judges chapter 5 when the leaders lead verse 2 in Israel when the people willingly offer themselves verse 4 the latter part says then when or let's just say verse 4 when when God goes out Lord when you have gone out when you are marching it says when you're on the march Notice what the text says, the earth trembled and the heavens poured, the clouds poured water, the mountains blushed and gushed before the Lord. It says in verse 8 or, or verse uh, 9 that, that Deborah offered, or, or verse nine, the latter part of verse 9, they offered themselves willingly. And then it talks about Deborah in verse 7. Until Deborah arose, a mother in Israel. I'm just highlighting this because I want to show you something about it. He goes on in great description in verse 20. The the heavens fought. The stars in their courses fought against Sisera, who was an evil, evil king that had 600 iron chariots. The river or the torrent of Kishon sweeps, swept away uh, the ancient torrent, the torrent of Kishon. The horses, in verse 32, the horses' hooves pounded, galloping, galloping. And then everything shifts. Curse me, Rose, said the angel of the Lord. Curse its inhabitants bitterly. Why? Because they did not come to the help of the Lord to help the Lord against the mighty. This scripture is basically a diary of of. God on the move and God going to war and what he expects from his people. He expects his people, as that, ver- as that chapter says, in two different places to offer, to willingly offer themselves, to get involved, to get serious, to get sober, 
to get on fire and become passionate for God because he's on the move. It's not a normal time, Judges chapter 5, and it's not a normal time in this nation or in our world. And when God was going marching, on going out to war, the scripture said that the earth, the earth started trembling. The earth said, if God's going to fight, I need to get and do what I can do. I can shake a little bit. And, and can you imagine Sisera and all of his chariots and hundreds of thousands of soldiers as they're marching against Israel and the earth under them begins to shake? And then the Bible said, the heavens begin to drop. The clouds begin to pour. The, 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 the clouds said, the heavens, the sky said, well, if the one who created us and separated us from land, if the earth is going to help God fight, then I'm going to pour down so much rain that I'm going to create mud puddles and pull the wheels off those iron chariots. And the scripture said that, the, that the, the rain and the clouds and the heavens got involved. The earth is shaking. It's involved. And then and it says the mountains bowed down. The one, one translation said laid low. And I looked that up and it said to, 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 so, that, so that nothing could be hid. In other words, if the enemy tried to hide behind the mountains, the mountains said, you're not hiding behind me. When God's going to war, you, 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 you're gonna, you, you can't hide behind me. I'm bending low. In verse 12, it said Deborah uttered. This song, uh, she, she said, well, if there's no men that will lead, I, I, I can't fight like a soldier, like a Navy SEAL, but if there are no men that will lead, then I'll lead. And I believe God's going to use women and mothers. And the Bible said she was a mother of Israel. She was a mother in Israel. And this is an hour when mothers are standing up to school boards and saying, you are not going to teach my children that nonsense. I love it. I love it. Mothers, Deborah. It's our schools and it's our nation. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to calm down. Deborah. And then the Bible said that the stars from heaven begin to fight from their courses. I mean, they said, My God's going to war. The one who named me gave me a name. Well, see, named, the Bible said he, he, he he's hung the stars and, and spoke them into existence and named each one. And, and the stars said, he, he knows my name. How can I sit up here? And so, you know, uh, what that has reference to is, the, is they didn't have GPS navigation systems back then. The only way that they could travel was by looking at the stars. Read the story of the three wise men, and you'll understand how they got there was following the stars. It was the navigation, the North Star, etc. And the stars from their courses said, we got to get involved. Let's confuse them. Let's move over a little bit. I don't know how they did it, but the stars got involved in it. And then the river in verse 21, I love it. The river, the river, the, the, the river of Kishon swept them away. The, the river began to swell. The river began to say and swirl and say, you know what? If you'll shove them in here, I'll drown them for you. Just, just push them in. Because God's going to war and God created the heavens and the earth and God created the stars, the moon, the ocean. The, he created everything. How can we not get involved? They're willingly offering themselves. And even the horses, the Bible said. The horses said, I've got hooves and if you'll knock them down, I'll pound on them a little. I'll beat, I'll kick, I'll kick their brains out. All of this is going on. And suddenly the story shifts because God sends an angel all the way from heaven down to earth to pronounce a curse on a group of people, a tribe called Meros. Why? He said, curse ye them bitterly because they came not to the help of the Lord. Because in one of the most crucial times in human history, when God was on the move, they stood over with their hands in their pockets, uninvolved, unconcerned, lethargic, indifferent, 
callous, lukewarm, and not interested in the fight. And the angel said, I curse you. I curse you bitterly because when God needed your help, you did not come and fight against his enemies. I have come today to tell you that I believe heaven has declared war on the powers of Satan. I believe that the church is what God has given to the earth as the answer because what we have is Jesus Christ. And it's all hands on deck. It's time to enlist. It's time to involve. It's time to invest because heaven has declared war. Heaven has declared war on the, uh, the suicide rate that is un, out of control in this particular time. It's declared war on depression and fear and worry. Heaven has declared through the cross that Jesus shed his blood on. He has declared war against sin. He loves people. He hates sin. He, he's declared war against demonism and the power of the occult and Satanism and evil and immorality. He's declared war on it. He's declared war on people dying and going into eternity without God. And he says, what I need is I want people involved. If nature and all of the earth is getting involved, how much more should the church and the people of God give themselves willingly? Matthew chapter 12, Jesus said, He that is not with me is against me. There's no neutrality. There's no middle ground. He said, He that gathereth not with me is part of the other crowd, the scatters. Are you gathering or are you scattering? Congratulations in this room today. This is a beautiful crowd, and it's time for the church to gather. It's time for the church to gather. It's time. No neutrality, no middle ground. You're either part of the solution or you're part of the problem. You're either believing this book and believing it ought to be proclaimed like never before, or you have become just like the world. The unemployment rate in the church is astronomical. What do you mean? Outside of every church is a huge invisible sign. Help won't it apply inside. Jesus put it this way. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Not the sitters, the laborers. Not the spectators, the laborers. We need preachers. We need your help in every campus. We need your help in ushering and following up and calling and prayer teams and, and counseling teams and helping people and mentoring people. We need ushers. We need worship leaders. We need preachers. We need prayer warriors. And I wrote this one down. We need some people to get rich and bless the church. Nothing wrong with that one either. Get a job, work, and get rich and bless the church. Clap your hands if you think that's a good one. I don't want everybody to preach. <laughs> I don't want every, if If you're doing real good and you're giving to the house of the Lord, you're as anointed as any singer I got up here. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Matthew chapter 20 and verse 6 said, Why stand you here all day idle? And they give the answer in the next verse. They said, Because no man has hired us. Isn't that something? He said, because no one would hire us. I'm not going to use what I've got till it benefits me. Matthew 14 and verse 8, when Mary broke open the alabaster box, Jesus forever immortalized her and said, wherever the gospel is preached, this woman will be memorialized. Why? For Listen to his words. Because she has done what she could. She has done what she could. If you'll do what you can, God will do what you can't. That's just Georgia, North Carolina slang. Say amen, somebody. Tell somebody, if you'll do what you can, 
God will do what you can't. And God won't do what you can't until you do what you can. Maybe you need to praise him. Maybe you need to pray. Maybe you need to get back to the Bible. Maybe you need to get back in the house of the Lord. Maybe you need to put him first. And if you'll do what you can, God will do what you can. Somebody asked me, what's it like to be called to preach? In a, in a phrase, I, I thought about it this week. It's a burden. Not a bad burden, but by that I mean something gripped my life when I was 20 years of age. I started preaching at 25, but something got a hold of me. Something, a burden gripped my life. I would go to concerts or ball games and I would see the hundreds of people and I, my mind would wonder, has anybody told them about Jesus? Do, do these people know Jesus? Because really what, what I'm trying to get across to you is a burden. A burden for the, what's going on in the world. A burden to get the... When this gospel is preached, Matthew 24, into all the world, then the end will come. We need a burden for people on the job, a burden for people in the city, a burden for those who do not know Christ. Do we really believe there is a heaven and hell? Do we really believe that if your name is not written in the book of life, you can perish forever and forever and forever? We need a burden again. Lest we have the curse of inactivity, of passivity, of just, it's no concern to me. My hands are in my pocket. I'm just, I'm just bumping along in life. I want to be used of God. I want God to use this church and use every one of you. It's time to give Him your talents. It's time to get involved. It's time to say, God, I'll give myself to revival for this for this world and this nation and let it start with me and let it start with my church. God, I want to see something shake the earth. If, if, the, if the world, the earth can shake and the clouds can pour and if the horses can pull and if, if all of these things go to war when God goes to war, what should the church, the army of the Lord Jesus Christ, what kind of burden should we feel when we're around people, even in our own family, who are lost without God? This program has been sponsored by friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. We hope you've enjoyed this teaching by Jensen Franklin and thank you for your continued support of this ministry. For more information about this message and other ministry resources, visit us online at jensenfranklin.tv.